That's one way to do it. That's one way to do it. That's one way to do it. Wow! That's one way to do it. 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 Nice. Nice fridge. Welcome back for episode 22 of Building a House Start to Finish. Today we tackle the project of building the kitchen cabinets starting in our shop. And today's episode is sponsored by Skillshare. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't and check out Ray and Jay's Builder Buddies channel. I'm not responsible for what's on there. First of all, I wanna give credit to the homeowner, Tina, for the inspiration behind this kitchen. She wanted a mix of concrete and wood counters, a large bar seating area, since there's no dining room table in this small house. She also wanted mostly open cabinetry with floating shelves as the upper cabinets, stainless steel appliances, a apron front sink, and we took liberty to do a little design extra like this design in the countertop. I really love the way this kitchen turned out, and we're gonna show you how we made it, even though this isn't a how-to video. I mean, I am a little jealous. They do have more wood than I do, but I think my wife would kill me if I brought all this home. I don't know, maybe not. All right, so what did I get? Well, let me show you. Here it is. Three quarter maple plywood, loaded up, ready to go. Arlo has been counting the side pieces that we need so we know how many pieces to rip out of our material here on the table saw. So right now we have all the side material in long pieces. Now we're gonna break them down a little bit more outside because I don't have enough room in my shop to run these things through the saw sideways. In case you were wondering, we don't normally build the kitchens in our houses, but on this one, it's small. We wanted the cabinets to match the rest of the features in the house, and there's not many doors and no upper cabinets. So it was a pretty good incentive for us to go ahead and make the cabinets instead of having to special order them and wonder if they're gonna be right or on time. So that's what we did. That's what we call fine cutting there. Yeah, that's nice. So what he was doing just now is raking off all the splinters because the edge of the plywood tears out really bad on my on my table saw. Actually, I'm gonna show you one that's really bad. Oh my goodness. Uh, woodworker friends, I'm really sorry. I'm gonna put this on video. Hey, look at that. Do you like that? It looks like it came fresh off the sawmill to me, but actually what we're doing here is putting all of these bad edges in a place where they're not gonna be visible. We're lucky in this case that we have that uh, actually, opportunity that we can hide all this. Otherwise, I would need to put in a much finer cutting blade, see? That right there, that's just a straight line rip blade. It is not good for sheet goods at all. You would need a combination blade, something with a lot more teeth. Something like this that came with my saw. Combination blade, that would do much better, but we're not gonna do that. Also, you can do something like put in a zero clearance plate. Look, I got one right here. It's brand new, zero clearance for a unisaw but I'm not gonna put it on, so. All right, we have the first box. This is gonna be kind of two cabinets built into one. That's why it's so huge. It's the sink cabinet plus a little dummy corner cabinet where the other cabinets will butt into it from this direction. Oh man. Yeah, there it is. Once the bulk of the cabinet boxes were assembled, it was time to process the material to make the face frames. In this case, we chose to use hard maple, which will match the accent wall that's in the same room as the kitchen at the Modern Mountain Getaway. We're making these face frame pieces. I'm just making a bunch of strips and making them straight and plain. They are very sharp edge though. So what I'd like to do is hand plane all the edges. Now, I know I'm gonna be doing a ton of pieces this size. It's really hard to hold a small piece while you're planing the edges. And so I just quickly nailed together this little jig out of junk wood that will simply hold my piece and allow me to get a good hand plane edge on it without much struggle. Yes, we try to avoid struggle when possible. Now, I would even screw this piece down, but right now it'd be in the way if I screwed it down right here. So there we go, really easy. I'm gonna do another one for you just to show you how easy it is because I'm, 
So excited about it. It's just so easy. Man, anybody can do this right here. Amazing how it's holding it. Look at that. It's so easy. I think I can do this all day. It's just so much fun. But I can't have all the fun because Ray is dying to get out from behind that camera and hand plane these himself. So I think I'll let him do that. Here you go, Ray. Dude, what are you doing here? You're not. Oh, this ain't the real estate office. When we do these face frames, mm -hmm. instead of uh, doing it upright like that, let's lay it on its back. Okay. But this is kind of high up on this table. Right. So I got some special platforms that I made special. just for this scenario. I'm freaking out. I knew this day would come. I've been preparing for this for some time now. Yeah. yeah. All right, so let's do it. Well, I keep them hidden over here in plain sight. So uh, these things are my little platforms. You know, it doesn't look like much right now, but uh, we're gonna pull them out and set this thing up. Watch out. And there you have it. This is about 18 inches high. It's just a little knockdown, down, a uh, little platform I made. Actually, I built these I have two of them. I built them for building subwoofers. <laughs> I used to build a lot of subwoofers and they were big and heavy and they were too tall to be built on a countertop and they were too short to be built on the floor. So after I tried building a few on top of five gallon buckets, I decided it would be worth the time to make some awesome little knockdown platforms and I use them quite often. All right, Ray, there you go. Is that a pretty comfortable work height there? Oh yeah. Can you deal with that? I think I can deal with it. Okay, good to go. Let's take a second to thank our sponsor for today's video, Skillshare. And if you don't know what Skillshare is, it's an online learning community where millions of people come together to take the next steps in their creative journey. Skillshare offers classes for entrepreneurs and lifelong learners like me, ranging anywhere from music to graphic design. Right now I'm taking outdoor photography with Min T. And my specialty is capturing architecture, lifestyle, and just beautiful moments that's all around us. Today's class is using photography to find beauty in the mundane. And I'm using what I've learned to take higher quality photos of all of our projects that are all in the great outdoors. I wanna mention that Skillshare is curated with learning in mind, so there are no ads, and they are also always launching new creative classes. Skillshare is very affordable, less than $10 a month with an annual membership. The first thousand people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership so you can explore your own creativity. All right, Ray, we're gonna give everybody a pro tip right now. Pro tip. You ready for this? Yeah. Okay, so we're wanting to put a fine bead of glue on this. We don't want squeeze out on this because we're gonna finish everything. We don't wanna have a big mess to clean up. So Ray, you can see he's gonna use his pinky as a little guide against the cabinet. Go ahead and ease on with it there. Just the tiniest glue bit of a bead of glue. There he is. He's using his finger as a guide down the edge of the cabinet to keep the glue bottle. Yeah, glue. Oh, come on, little glue. To keep the glue bottle perfectly centered on the plywood and just run a very small bead. There you go, wham, bam. Wham, bam. The face frames go on real easy. The way that we're doing this, at least. We're just lining up the edge, a little bit of glue and some brad nails. That will be just fine. So Ray is just feeling the edge at the top and the bottom. <laughs> He's about to feel the edge. You are gonna feel the edge, right, Ray? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, I didn't see him feel the edge, but I'm pretty sure that he did. <laughs> All right, let me just show you what, what it is here so you can see it. All right, we are hanging past this edge just by that bevel we're talking a 30 second of an inch this this side is just hanging past and there's a little nail shot out and we're not gonna worry about that because we can break it off and actually all the sides of these butt up against another cabinet so we have a little bit of uh freedom here ray why don't you show them the drawer why don't you just go ahead oh wow wow have you done this before no but uh, i feel like this is my problem all right you did it so good 
Oh no, I have nails. Dang. I was gonna say nailed it. There they went. That's hilarious. So on this drawer box, we got a little glue squeeze out and I'm trying to be careful not to let it show. You can see right here. Can you see that, Ray, on the camera? Oh yeah. So there's a little glue squeeze out. It's really hard to clean out these tiny little corners sometimes. So I use one of these little rulers. It's just a little uh, stainless steel ruler. And I like to uh, just take it and use the corner of it to get the glue out. See that right there? Ha! I'm really picky about that stuff. And that's a trick I learned from my, my stepdad, who was a guitar builder. So I guess that's what I get for being the son of a guitar builder. Once the cabinets were assembled, it was time to move locations to the upper shop where there's more room to do the finishing. Now, we didn't always have this upper shop. We built it about six years ago after being in business about 15 years with only a basement shop. It's really important to have this space for finishing in bigger projects. That's it? Oh, that's too bad we showed up right there, Don. <laughs> Dang Perfect it. timing. <laughs> A very important step in the woodworking process is the finishing. And if you want to get a great finish, you have to make sure you get all of the dust off of your workpiece before finishing. So we use an air hose and a high pressure nozzle to spray off any dust all the way around the cabinet before touching it with any kind of finish. Each cabinet is done like this to make sure we have a uniform finish everywhere. Next, we start on the inside of the cabinets before doing the face frame, and we're using a 3M spray gun that's really meant for car finishes, but it works great for polyurethane, especially the water base that we like to use. This is a satin finish, and we did two coats on all of the insides and face frames of the cabinets. I really can't say enough good things about using a high-quality water-based polyurethane versus oil-based for a project like this. It dries in about a quarter of the time with very little smell and very easy cleanup. It also has a UV inhibitor that prevents the wood from yellowing over time, and it's just easier to work with. The next morning, we were back on the job, and it was immediate disaster. Hot sauce down! Hot sauce down! You got your chicken nuggets to start <laughs> dipping right now because it ain't going to be good. <laughs> Break for lunch! I'm not above that. It's still good. Generally speaking, it's easier to install upper cabinets before base cabinets, but in this case, we have no upper cabinets, so we get going with the base cabinets. This was our largest cabinet that we had, and it's the refrigerator cabinet, and all it does is cover the sides of the refrigerator, so you only see the nice stainless steel front part. We also included some storage overhead. The refrigerator the homeowner chose is also a counter depth fridge, which means it doesn't stick out any farther than the rest of the cabinets, which looks better. Some cabinets are harder to install than others, and definitely in this case, the most difficult one was the sink base. It has pipes coming in one way and wires coming in from another, and they all have to be fitted into very precisely cut holes in different sides of the cabinet as the cabinet is lifted and set into place. And this kind of looks like a rodeo show, and it actually was harder than it even looks on video. After this cabinet was installed, we could move on to the peninsula, which butts into this cabinet partially. And since there's no wall to screw the cabinet to, it has to be fastened down to the floor, which is a concrete floor, which is trouble. So what we have to do is tap con and liquid nail a block down to the floor at the side of each cabinet. And that way we have something to attach the cabinet to. Now this might seem like a bit of overkill, but you have to remember that the top going on this hangs off of the back of the cabinet by over a foot. That means there's a lot of mechanical advantage if you push on that outside edge of the countertop to want to pull the cabinet up off the floor. So we don't want to take any risk of this cabinet coming loose. Once these peninsula cabinets were installed, we then covered the back with a piece of three-quarter Advantech plywood, and this is to give us a nailing depth to install the stone veneer that would be the finished surface for the back of this cabinetry. This is Arlo's good side. Let's see your bad side. 
Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> In case you missed our previous video about this stone, it's called Evolve Stone, and you actually just fasten it with finish nails through the surface of the stone, and it looks great, and we did this in about 10 minutes. Pretty awesome. On the cabinets that do have doors, we simply used a piece of plywood banded with a piece of maple for a modern looking door. And well, that's all the time we have for today. And so next week, we're gonna check out the construction of the countertops, which includes some wood counters, some concrete counters. And this was our first try ever at concrete counters. You'll get to see that, as well as some other things like the construction of the floating shelves. So make sure to stay tuned and see all of that going on next week, episode 23. We'll see you later. Hey, uh, Jay, yeah, grab a shovel and uh, just level that out for me. <laughs> Please <laughs> tell me you're joking. <laughs>